starting live video. Live video. It says we're live. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ivan Zoot. Welcome to Jatai Academy. I am Ivan, and that that's Doug. And tonight we're down for a live demo of a vintage guy haircut. So I'm going to get the phone in the bracket and uh, hopefully get us a real good angle here so that we can see and look and do and demo. I'm going to move us just a little closer and uh, let's just see. Want to get in just a little close. The lights went out. The lights will go back on shortly as we get ourselves ready here. It is live so it's a little uh, little low tech. And let's put this here. The lights are good. The camera's good. There's Doug. We're zooming in. This is two foot zooming it's called because we zoom using our two feet. Okay, we got him kind of in the middle of the camera. That looks like it's good. And how's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to Mike's Barber Shop. Welcome to Jatai Academy. Jatai Academy is J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. As you've come to know it over the past several months, your home for awesome beauty and barber industry educational content from me and a whole host of other professionals in the beauty and barber industry. Subscribe by going online to jatai.net, fill out the information there, and you will get emails containing great videos every single day of the week with awesome stuff. Once a month, we try to go live here with me. I know there's other live presentations from some other educators with J the Jatai team is looking pretty good. The angle's good on the camera there. Excellent. Uh, we want to be able to kind of keep moving in such a way that we'll be able to see everything as we go. Um, Doug has agreed to be our model for demonstration purposes. Everybody wave, Doug. Doug, wave to everybody. Everybody wave Hello. back. Doug is not moving. He's so, look how good he sits. <laughs> My head's cut off. It's not about my head, it's about Doug's head, so don't worry. If my head disappears out of the top of the camera, I'm not gonna worry about it, because it's his head we're interested in. These people see me all the time. Um, Doug's mom and my wife know each other since high school, which is like a long, long time ago. Um, so he's kind of practically family, but has agreed to donate some hair. When I saw his picture, when we were getting ready to do this, he sent me a current headshot, and I know he doesn't want to stray too far from what Doug is supposed to look like. So when I said vintage guy haircut, he was down for it. He knew what I meant, and you do too. It's going to be classic tapered. We're going to take a little bit of length out of the top. He says he's a little overdue from a normal haircut. One of my favorite consultation questions in a situation like this is, and here's my series. Number one, how long has it been since your last haircut? How long has it been since your last haircut? About two months. About two months. My next favorite question is, so is that typical for you? No. You going a little longer than normal? <laughs> yes, definitely. Great questions, excellent answers. Because that type of information tells me what's his normal interval, how long have we been since then, what is he typically used to? Human hair grows at a rate of half an inch a month. If he's gone two months, that's going to be about an inch. If I look at that back and sides, that tells me he's not skinned down, but he's got a pretty good taper. He looked at my hair and said, eh, that may be a little shorter than about what I do, but pretty close. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to taper the back and sides. We're going to layer the top. We're going to blend it together. We're going to create a nice professional line and edge all the way around and send him out happy. It's going to be... Uh, probably a light wax for a styling product, wax pomade kind of product, just to give it a little hold and control without the stiffness you get from hairspray and without the crispiness that I tend to like from something like a firm hold gel. Does that sound about right for you? Yep. There you go. It's going to be a winner. What are we going to get out of it educationally? What I hope to share is the concept of reverse blending. And if you've heard me live or seen me in programs, you know that I'm a strong advocate for making blending easier. When I do lay live classes and programs and I say, hey, what's the toughest part of a men's haircut? Everybody's hand goes up and everybody says blending. Whether it's a tight skin fade or a classic tapered haircut, the transition from short to long, from long to short, from nothing to something, from something to nothing, is the challenge people always have. So, what can we do to make blending easier? I believe there's two things we need to talk about. Number one, my mantra. I've been saying this for years and, you know, eventually, hopefully, this is one of the things they remember me for when I'm not here anymore. And that is, if you don't put the line in, 
You don't got to take the line out. And if you spend time on Instagram, you see people skinning out these sides, putting hard lines and haircuts, and then killing themselves to take these lines out. Don't do it. Don't put the line in. You don't have to take the line out. So what I like to advocate is cutting from the top down, cutting the top first. If you cut the top first, get your top length squared away. And when I say squared away, that's a very deliberate choice of words, as we're gonna talk about in just a moment, the concept of rectilinear hair sculpture. Hear the word rectangle in there? That's the idea that good men's hair cutting is the intersection of horizontal tops with vertical sides. And when a horizontal top meets a vertical side, there's a weight corner. The weight corner, to some extent, is the essence of good men's hair cutting. Strong, masculine shapes that have an intersection between vertical and horizontal. So we're gonna cut the top first, we're gonna level out the top square, we're gonna take in the sides vertically, then we will taper the perimeter. Rather than taper, layer, and blend, the traditional three-step approach to a men's haircut, we're gonna layer and taper. And when we taper up from below, when we run into or intersect with the previously layered interior, the blend, that was a terrible finger snap. That was better. The, when we layer first and taper second, when we run into, it's like rewinding the tape, when we layer first and taper second, when we taper up from below and we run into and intersect with the previously layered interior, that was a pretty good snap. It's gonna blend automatically. That's what we hope to show, that's what we strive to achieve, because if we can share with you a way to get blending done easier, faster, and better, we change your game, we change your life, we change your productivity, and the business gets even better than it already is. Does that make sense to everybody? If you got any questions, I'm trying to monitor what's going on up there. I spy Zootco, Rebecca Harris. That's my buddy from here in Chicago. Yes, that is a zoot comb uh, introduced just this year. It's the men's haircutting multi-tool, the Swiss Army comb for guy haircuts. You'll see me cut this whole haircut without ever picking up a different comb. You'll see all the great things it can do. So that's enough of the intro at your Thai Academy. We're about getting down to business, so we're gonna get some haircut. Let's get him caked and draped, covered up and ready to go. And we'll be off on our way. All right, next trips, of course, because that's the law. But more importantly, next trips, because next trips say barbering. They're just a part of the barber shop experience, and you can't really call it a barber haircut if you don't use a neck strip. I like to use a paper towel like that along the shoulders. I've got it tucked inside the back of the collar. What was that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of coaching here from off in the wings just to make sure we're online and we're on board. But we use a, uh, this is a uh, uh, shop towel, a paper towel on the shoulders like this, tucked in. That way later when we pull the corners and it pops out, any hair that might be along there is gonna pop out and not fall down the back of his shirt. So we've got it covered up. Now we've got our cape. And this one's a nice big one and a classic barber stripe. I don't think we can show up for a vintage haircut without a classic barber stripe cape. So we're going to get him closed up here. Troy is asking about the ashtray. Troy is asking about the ashtray. You know, every once in a while when I shoot a video in here, uh, that is an ashtray. Here, let's just uh, show that here. I don't want to move the camera because i got a great camera angle, but yes, that is an ashtray. Perhaps you can see it on the other chair over here. Does that swing into the picture? No, it doesn't. We have a matched set of five 1964 Pater Barber chairs, and every one of them's got the, you know, and when Doug sat down, the first thing Doug said was, I like the ashtray. He's not a smoker, but it's not about smoking. It's about that appreciation for vintage barber shop experience and culture. So, uh, Doug mentioned it, I'm mentioning it, uh, Troy mentioned it, yeah, it's just part of the experience. So here's what we're going to do, we're going to layer the top of the haircut. We're going to get that hair damp, whether you shampoo first or whether you hit them with a water bottle, we're going to dampen the top, and we're going to go in and we're going to do our scissor cutting through the top of the haircut. Get them damp enough to work with, 
Um, I tend to like cutting lotions or cutting with product in the hair. Uh, cutting with product in the hair maintains even and consistent hydration. It also maintains even and consistent distribution and tension during a haircut. Um, this is a product, it is a leave-in uh, treatment and conditioner. Uh, it provides a little bit of body as a styling product, but a great way to add a little bit of body and serve as a cutting lotion that you won't have to rehydrate with. It's time to pick up some scissors and cut the top of the hair. We're going classic feather right here. That is a classic feather switchblade 5.5. I love my switchblades. I've been using them since I got into the business oh so many years ago. Um, can't beat them. For 10 bucks, the cost of a pair of blades, you've got a brand new pair of scissors when you need it. You don't have to worry about chipping or breaking a blade. You don't have to worry about dropping a pair of scissors. You've always got backup blades right there in the cabinet. We're gonna cut the top and we're gonna maintain horizontal positioning as we cut through the top. I'm gonna comb the hair straight up and I'm gonna cut straight across. Straight up, cutting straight across. Straight up, cutting straight across. Fingers parallel to the floor, comb parallel to fingers, scissors parallel to fingers as I move my way straight back through the head. Now, you would call these horizontal sections relative to Doug's head in a series moving back through the head. Once we've done that, we will move over. Center panel right there, it's an area down the center of the head. Now I'm gonna hop over and extend out. Notice my comb is drawing up horizontal. I'm looking for a piece of the previously cut section in my fingers to serve as my guide. I'm levering, you see me lever my fingers up like that as I come in and you'll notice there's dropout. The hair in this area here is dropping out of my fingers and not getting cut. That is what is gonna create that weight corner. Because as the hair comes up, and I wanna tell you guys, I was talking about it the other day with somebody. The first night of beauty school, Pat Patterson at Pivot Point in Chicago said to us in our introduction to the program, welcome to beauty school, welcome to cosmetology, welcome to hair cutting. Every single thing you can learn is based on simple principles of geometry. And I went, oh, I'm dead. Okay, geometry sucked in high school. Fortunately, it wasn't about proofs and that half of geometry that nobody really needs to know anyways. It was the part of geometry. This guy's an engineer, so he knows this kind of stuff. He's laughing because he's going, dude, geometry was easy. I got through like exponential calculus or something crazy like that. All right? I'm cutting your hair and you're an engineer. Remember that. <laughs> but here's the deal. Geometry sucked, but I was really good at like drawing. Mechanical drawing, I did that freshman year of high school. Lines and angles and shapes, that's the part I understood. And I fortunately found out that's the part of geometry that hair cutting is all about. So, we draw length up. Here's an example of where that geometry kicks in. Like every other human I've ever met, Doug's head is curved. It's not round, there are no round heads, but it's curved. From the top of his head, his forehead curves down. And from the top of his head, his head curves to the side. We have the apex or the high point of the head. From this point, everything curves away. Based on the idea that we're cutting at a horizontal plane in space above his head, and you realize by the time I'm done with this video, Doug will be able to cut hair, okay? Because he's totally with me on this. I can see in his reaction. But think about it. That means the hair at the front here is longer because it needs to reach up to the plane from a curved point farther away from the point of origin, meaning the point at which the hair is attached to the head. That also means that, okay, let's, here's a test. I know Doug is with us. After I've cut the top, Doug, where is the single shortest piece of hair on your head? At the very center. Top dead center, bingo! 1,500 hours of cosmetology it took to get me through the program. What are we in here now? Like, like. 14 minutes and the dude's got it nailed? Okay, exactly. Top dead center is the shortest piece of hair on the head. Getting longer, getting longer, getting longer, moving every direction out from the top. That's called planar sculpting. We're cutting at a plane above the head. I'm gonna stop talking about it and I'm just gonna finish cutting the top. Always coming back to top dead center and moving out to the sides. I'm using my five and a half primarily because when I first learned a cutting system taught by a popular chain here in the United States, they advocated 
for the use of that five and a half. One of the cool things about your feather switchblades is they come in other sizes. That's six and a half. I'm going to switch tip to, what do you want me to do? You got to tip it up. I got to tip one up a little bit. Okay, you want to tip the angle of the camera up just a little bit? All right, a little creative coaching coming in there, no problem. All right, this is why this is free form and casual. This is not like shooting a video that we're going to sell on a website somewhere. It's got to be perfect all the time. Cut, re-edit. We don't do that. We just go fly in here. All right, so now I switch to my six and a half, my big feather. I got a little more blade. And by the way, a longer blade like this is definitely more conducive to men's geometric cutting and planar shapes because the longer scissors lends itself to creating those longer, cleaner lines. So when we're happy with the top, and at this point I'm declaring that I'm happy with the top, it's time to move on to the sides. Keep him a little cleaned up so he's comfortable the whole way through. Cutting the sides. We're gonna dampen things a little because they dry down. Me talking the whole way through a haircut's like standing here with a blow dryer. I'm known for hot air. And somebody's handing me my drink. Pardon me while I step off camera. My wife in the background just went, somebody. Okay, apparently she wants credit for bringing me my drink. Thank you, honey. All right, vertical at the sides. We're coming in vertical. We're gonna take sections, we're gonna draw them away from the head. Notice my fingers are very vertical, my comb is vertical, my fingers are parallel to my comb, my scissors will be parallel to my fingers, and I'm gonna take vertical sections through the side. Now, I call them horizontal sections through the top. You'll notice they're parallel, but as we round to the head, they become vertical. We will cross-check the top, cutting the other way. Anything we cut one way, we cross-check the opposite, and in going through the top of Doug's hair, when I cut perpendicular to my original sections, as I elevate these sections up, I'm looking for any rippling, high points, jumps, bumps, skips, steps, ledges, ridges, or demarcations that might need to be polished off. That's what cross-checking is all about. So the top is pretty good, I just have to run through there. I'm fairly confident in my top cutting, so I don't do a lot of cross-checking on too many of my guy haircuts, but certainly here in the context of the demo, we're gonna do it. Mike Hopper from way down at the bottom of Indiana, what's he gotta say? The comments are now over the client's face. Is there a way to turn them off? Other people who will comment, they know how to do it. If somebody knows how to turn off the comments, Somebody let me know. Vanessa, if you know how to do that, you can do that. In the meantime, I'm going to tip the camera back down where I had it, where Mike was able to see the top of the client. So, so much for that help that we received from our peanut gallery. Is that better, Mike? I hope so. Appreciate you, buddy. Laura, swipe them to the right. But I have to swipe them all the time? Johnny says swipe them to the left. You people sort it out. I'm going to cut hair. All right, here we go. Vertical sides coming up and cutting off. Coming up and cutting off. Coming up and cutting off. I'm gonna work my way from the front hairline all the way to the back. It's gonna look like this. Now, we've drifted out of the, off to the back of the head. I'm just gonna turn this slightly. I don't want it to fall out of the camera frame here, which we're not gonna do. Now, as we've discussed, vertical sides intersecting with horizontal top, there should be, and I know there is, a weight corner. And I'm gonna come back on this, polishing it up, so that I can then show you the weight corner we were speaking of. You guys can start to see it taking shape as I polish off the higher portion of this. See it right there? Take a look at it this way. I'm gonna turn him 90 degrees so he's nose dead on the camera. You know what, it was vintage haircut, so I went with vintage barber jacket. Right before we went live on here, I switched out of my shirt into my jacket, and I started singing the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood song, and I gotta tell you, I felt bad. I should have done that on camera. But since I don't have a t-shirt or undershirt on underneath, my wife suggested you guys don't wanna see that, and I can understand that. Here we go, boom. See that right there? That's the weight corner. See that right there? Horizontal top intersecting with vertical side. That's the weight corner. Now I am gonna go into that with my blending scissors a bit to take just enough weight out 
that I have an appealing visual silhouette, but not so much weight that I kill the classic squareness of our shape. So we horizontal the top, we vertical the sides. I'm going to turn him, I don't want to cut dark side of the moon to the camera. That's one of my big pet peeves with a lot of educators, trainers, and uh, hair cutters. But I am going to tweak a little bit on the camera because I do want to share vertical palm to palm as an option. If you watched me cut Doug's right side, I came in over the top of the head with my left hand and I cut up from below like that. Fingertips down, coming up. This is a common and popular way for cosmetology professionals to do vertical sectioning at the side of the head. But the risk is that if you follow the curve of the head, you'll round out the weight corner, killing the masculinity of the shape. So one of the alternative suggestions that we make for a lot of hair cutters is cutting what we call vertical palm to palm. I'm going to show you what that looks like on Doug's left side. Vertical palm to palm, as the name implies, means we're going to use vertical sections, but we're going to come in palm to palm. Notice my two hands. My palms are facing one another. Now, instead of being fingertips down, I am fingertips up. And my two palms, when I cut, I will cut down from above instead of up from below. It's the exact opposite. But the idea behind it is this. Click the screen to bring up options. Somebody else can deal with that. Okay, you can, Mike, you can see, can't you? All right, we're good. Here we go. Vertical palm to palm looks like this. And then you cut down from above. Don't cut past the second knuckle. We're gonna come in, fingertips up, palm to palm. Here's the advantage of this. It is almost impossible to round out the corner. Look what I had to do to round off the corner. My wrist is hyperextended, my fingers are pointing away, and I have to come in from the top to cut like this. We talk about the physiology of hair cutting. In addition to barber and cosmetologist, many of you know I'm a certified personal fitness trainer, and I got certified in fitness training not to work with marathon runners and bodybuilders, but specifically to work with beauty industry professionals on issues of health, wellness, and long-term durability behind the chair. This is crazy awkward and it hurts. It's bad for my wrist, it's bad for my shoulders, it's bad for my back, and it's bad for my haircut. Literally nobody wins with that formula. But by going palm to palm, by staying vertical, at the very least, the tendency would be to pull the fingertips back towards us, resulting in a hyperextended corner and actually an over-directed weight line. Think George Michael, think Wham, think 1980s, before you were born. And with too much of a corner in there, there was a time in the 80s when we tried to do that. We're not doing that now, but that is what we would end up with if we don't, if we pull our fingers back towards us. So with this side of the head, I'm using vertical palm to palm to share the option of not rounding that corner by using, oh, and in the background, we're getting still pictures for his mom, so she can text it to her right now so she knows what's happening. All right. Dude's got a wedding to go to this weekend, and he wants to look sharp, and he still wants people to recognize him, so when they meet him, they know who he is, as opposed to looking like somebody who got some freaky haircut for a website thing for the beauty industry. So we're, we're, we're going to stay respectful and true to that. All right, I'm going back over the back side of my fingers as we round out behind the ear. That vertical palm to palm is very, very valuable for the haircutting that happens from essentially the back of the ear forward to really keep that weight corner. And this is the light side because he wears his hair over towards the right. We don't have as much interior contributing weight on the side with the parting. We've got all this heaviness coming over here where we have that weight corner. So as you can see, sides done, sides done, coming in through the back, and he just slipped out of range here, so we'll bring him back in. Uh, we've got a little bit right here from the center back at the occipital out to the rear corner. Again, vertical, 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 staying very vertical. You can see evidence of me having already been here. When I pull those fingers out, you can see the hair that's been cut. You can see the little degree of weight that we've got, the weight corner. And again, with a little bit of blending should work. You know me, I love my blenders. We will polish that off. We are good so far. Recap, planar sculpting through the top of the head. 
just like a bunch of professionals. Planar sculpting through the top of the head, vertical sculpting, scissor over finger, vertical sculpting, uh, palm to palm on the opposite side to showcase the options, choices, and difference. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna tighten up the perimeter. I'm gonna go into clipper work. I'm gonna pick up my clipper, and in this case, I'm gonna pick up a three. I'm pretty sure I wanna cut them with a two, so what do I pick up? I pick up a three. When in doubt, especially first time, I've never cut done before, when in doubt, go one clipper longer than you think. I can always go to the shorter guard. I cannot put it back. Somebody just posted a pretty long comment. Can you let me know if there's something I need to respond to there? Yeah. Troy said, I remember one thing you said on a video on YouTube. You can add years to the start of your barbering career with good posture, or you can take years off your career with bad posture. Troy, I appreciate you remembering that. I appreciate that you referencing the fact that you've seen me on video before and been exposed to some of the good things I like to share, and you're absolutely right. Long-term durability is an important issue in our industry. I've got my three guard on. I'm real pleased with what I saw on the other side. Notice, couple tips and tricks on using clippers with guards. Guard your guard. See that fingertip right there on the corner of the guard? Halfway up this dude's dome. If the guard pops off and you bottom him out with a clipper, and I don't want to demo that today, but if, he just laughed, he thinks I'm kidding. If that happens, you're having a bad day at the office. And as I like to say, ultimately, you are responsible for what happens at the cutting end of the tool at all times. So you need to be in control of that tool. I'm working with what we call a C-shaped or curving motion. That's get in, get up, get out. Get in, get up, get out. That's that rotational movement of the clipper as we come from the perimeter up the haircut. And in this case, I'm coming right up to the widest point of the head at the occipital bone and the parietal ridge. I am leaving a little bit of weight on there. And we're gonna go to, again, I don't wanna cut on the dark side of the moon. Gotta be conscious of the camera angle there. We wanna see what we see. But I've got a little bit of blending weight there because I do want to cover some clip work comb technique in the context of the haircut. So again, brush them off, keep them comfortable. I said I thought I wanted to use a two. I check with a three. I'm actually happy with a three. Had I taken him down to a two, I might have been a little tight. And knowing he's got an event this week, he doesn't need to look like it's an absolutely fresh haircut in that regard. So. We have squared the top, vertical the sides. We knocked off the perimeter with a three guard. Now we're gonna go clipper over comb. For clipper over comb, I'm gonna go to my clipper with an adjustable blade. And I wanna show you how this one works. The adjustment lever is mounted here on the center top of the clipper. You've got a button to pull the blade back, and you've got the bar to push the blade forward, but it locks. So if you push it one click up, and you try to pull it with the bar, it won't go back. You can push it closed, but in order to open the blade, you've got to press the release button. That way you lock into the position where you want to be. This is a standard triple zero to one blade on this clipper, and when I go clipper over comb, I'm gonna to go to about halfway, two clicks up, for my clipper over comb work. Now I've shared this tip many times in classes and online. If you are less comfortable and less confident with clipper over comb, I'm a big believer in clipper cutting insurance. What I mean by that is put a number one guard on your clipper and cut clipper over comb with one guard in place. It slows you down, it backs you up, it backs you off. It moves you one eighth of an inch away from the surface of the comb. It cuts less aggressively, it cuts less progressively. And it gives you that oops protection that if you slip off the comb, you only thump up in the back of the head with a one guard, and I can blend my way out of that little piece of trouble. So, let's go over some pointers before we get started. What question? Hold things up, it's not on the camera. Oh, it's going up out of the camera? Okay, no problem. Uh, I'll try to be aware of that. Clipper over comb, we have cross cutting. That is where we are moving perpendicular to the teeth. Now, I don't say we're moving sideways because we're never going to hold the comb horizontal. Another one of my Instagram pet peeves is when the barbers of the world demonstrate clipper over comb with horizontal comb positioning. That's a no-no. Now, let me show you why. Rather than just pick on people for doing goofy stuff, let's talk about the whys behind it. I'm going to pump him up again. Get that chair up high, protect my back. 
If I hold my comb horizontally and I zip off the hair hanging out of the comb, where the hair accumulates in along the base of the teeth at the spine, and I want to make sure we're centered, where the hair accumulates in along the base of the teeth at the spine, if I zip that off, I'm going to get a nasty step, ledge, ridge, weight line, or demarcation in the haircut. And if you put the line in, you're going to have to work harder to take the line out. The alternative and the better solution, keep the hair hydrated while we work, the alternative and the better solution is to hold the comb at an angle. When the comb is held at an angle, you can see your weight area and you blend up. So here we go, that is cross cutting. I am running perpendicular to the teeth. At this point, the comb's at about a 45, spine of the comb at 45, teeth of the comb at 45 because they're 90 degrees, and I'm gonna come in like that. Look how smoothly, seamlessly, and easily I peel off what little weight line there is. And I'm going straight up and into the previously layered interior. Look how easy it is to see where we just run out of hair to get a beautiful blended transition. Remember I said I had some blending scissor work to do? I'm not seeing a whole lot of blending scissor work to do because I'm getting a fabulous blend as I run into or intersect with that previously layered interior. So cross cutting is our first technique that we're gonna look at with our clipper over comb. And I do wanna throw in a second technique. I wanna throw in the technique we call up cutting. Up cutting is where we run parallel to the teeth. So if the teeth are 45 degrees, the clipper is the same 45 degrees, parallel to the teeth, yet perpendicular to the scalp. This was cross cutting, this is up cutting. So Mr. Clipper Guy, if you're using cross cutting and you're using up cutting, I want to know why. What is the reason behind the two different techniques? Why would you use which one and where? Isn't that a great question? Well, here's the answer. Cross cutting, I like to think of as roughing in the shape. We're putting the basic shape in with cross cutting. Cross cutting is roughing it in where up cutting is polishing it up. Notice the difference. And here's what I mean. Another name for cross cutting is frequently referred to as trap cutting. Literally, the hair is trapped in the comb and when the clipper comes by, parallel to the spine and perpendicular to the teeth, the hair has nowhere to go but off. It is trapped in the teeth, the blade comes by, and the hair hits the floor. That's gonna be very direct, very productive, and very aggressive. Conversely, watch what happens with up cutting. What's that? What type of uh, this, uh, what type of clippers? This is a JRL model 1040, JRL 1040. Uh, it's a five-speed adjustable cordless lithium-ion air-cooled blade, dual metallic titanium and steel. Um, I kind of like this one, uh, and I've got it in the number two blade setting on the adjustment on the blade. Uh, available online at clipperguy.com while we're here. Um, here we go. Watch. Cross-cutting to rough in the shape up cutting to polish it up. And the reason up cutting is polishing is look what happens when I'm up cutting. Some of the hair is getting cut by the clipper as I push at it with the tool. But some of the hair is literally just being pushed or shoved up and out of the teeth and not getting cut. That's why up cutting is a more of a finesse or a polishing technique and cross-cutting is a very direct cutting action. Does that make sense to everybody? If that makes sense, give me a couple clickies. Give me some hearts, give me some thumbs, give me some love. Let me know. That's not because you like me. It's because you like the information. It's because what you're getting is making sense and it's something you can use. I'm a big believer that anytime you do an educational presentation, one of the goals is that everybody leaves with something they can turn into money beginning tomorrow. And uh, I'm hoping that's what some of you are getting out of this. So we're cross-cutting, we're cross-cutting, we're cross-cutting, we're cross-cutting. Is his mom watching? Okay, good. What do you think? Am I doing all right so far? You of all people should give me a thumbs up. Oh, look, look at all the thumbs up and the hearts you're getting. Ooh, Isn't he right. cute? All right, same. <laughs> all right, now we're getting it. Okay, good deal. 
You know, I do a lot of demonstrations on mannequins because mannequins will let us do whatever we want to do. And because I don't work full time in a shop, I'm only here on a part time basis, I frequently don't have the ability to source uh, a lot of really good models. So I very much appreciate Doug's willingness to come out tonight and participate, play along with us, and be a model for this haircut here. And I hope you all can, uh, can appreciate that as well because I think there is no question when we have the ability to cut a live model, uh, we do a whole lot better. Were you waiting on me? Were you trying to get my attention? Says his wife says it makes sense and she's not even a barber. His wife says it makes sense and she's not even a barber. I love those comments. Thank you, buddy. Um, by the way, that's very dangerous because uh, at some point somebody who's not qualified is going to think they can just knock this out pretty cool. All right, basic haircut I'm real happy with. Obviously, line and edging and detailing is going to be where we finesse and tune this up. I am going to switch to blending scissors. And by the way, for those of you that are keeping track or paying attention, it's been zoot comb all the way. It was zoot comb for scissor cutting on the top. It was zoot comb for clipper over comb work. It's wide teeth and it is zoot comb for blending scissors. Once again, anytime you're involved in over comb technique, we are always working at an angle. We are always, look how much nicer that looks. Just a little bit of polish with this thing. Um, that's a 4420 classic blender. Just a little bit of polish on the ends of the hair to finesse the blend. And notice I'm being very, very vigilant about being very, very specific about keeping my comb very, very vertical. If the top of the tips of the teeth tip in towards Doug, I'm gonna round out that corner. And everything I was trying to do with the rectangular shape is gone. So remember, when we roll the comb, we want the top of the tips of the teeth to be tipped out towards us, or we want the comb very, very vertical as we come around to finesse that shape, and we're gonna give us that real classic haircut look and feel. And that's what this sort of barbering work is all about. Eddie wants you to come to Dallas. Eddie wants me to come to Dallas. Eddie, I would love to come to Dallas. Reach out to me with a direct message on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any other platform, and we can talk about what it takes to get me out there to do some great Jatai Academy education live in your shop or salon. Love to do it. What does that say? Doing great, Ivan. Oh, who is that? It doesn't say who's saying that. Oh, oh, it's mom. Okay, mom's chiming in to, to let us know what she thinks. I was, I was worried, mom. I really was. I didn't, wasn't sure how this was going to go. All right. Um, skip guard tapering, probably the number one most popular video I've ever posted online. The skip guard concept is the idea, use a guard, skip a guard, use a guard as you work down the head. So we use our three, we skip our two, and we go to our one and a half. I'm going to put a one and a half guard on to fine tune the bottom edge. I'm going to open the blade up so it's one and a half plus a little bit because I don't really want to take him a whole lot shorter. I just want to finesse a little bit of a taper to that bottom edge. And notice it's two hands. I'm not doing this as a one-handed operation. I've got one hand on the clipper and one hand under the clipper. This hand is driving the bus and this hand can back me off if he's going to itch, twitch, wiggle, jump, or move, I can react very, very rapidly to what's happening in the hair cutting situation. Two hands on the tool at all times. We're just tightening up this perimeter. And notice I have not put down my comb. I'm not using my comb in this situation, but I have it in my hand because when I pick it up at the beginning of the haircut, I will keep it in my hand until I am finished with the haircut. Now notice, I used my three, I skipped my two, I go to my one and a half to feather in that bottom edge a little bit, and where my one and a half blends up and into my three, if I have any transitional demarcation, and I've got a little ghost of a demarcation in through here, it will be very easy to take that off with the number two. That's right. That's the idea. You use a guard, you skip a guard, you use a guard, and you go back to the guard you skip only if you need it. I've got a two on there with the guard closed, and you can hear it. I'm going to be quiet. I'm not good at quiet. You guys know that. Shh, listen. You hear it catching just the faintest amount of hair? That's that tiny little demarcation 
between my one and a half and my three. But look at that nape area. Look at the beautiful transitional taper we have down there. That just looks awesome. Perfect hair to cut for something like this. Okay, finesse and tune it up. I realize I got on the dark side there. I want to come around to where you can see me. Okay, it is now line edge detail and trim time. I'm going to switch to my trimmer. Now watch carefully now. I spin it around. Look at that. What do we have there? That's our detailing, trimming, or finishing comb. On the end of our zoot comb, it is the handle when you're using it, conventional clipper cutting. Now it becomes our detailing or finishing comb. I put my sideburn where I want it. I use my T-blade to strike my ear arc. I come up into that front area. The comb is thickest at the base of the teeth and getting thinner to the tips and the spine. It's got a slight rocker shape to it. So I can come in there. Look at the beautiful tapered transition at that sideburn. If I can do the other one to look like that, we're going to be a haircut hero here tonight. All right? Let's clean that up while we're at it. Some of you may live in a part of the world where neck dusters are not allowed based on sanitation restrictions, things like that. This is a nylon bristle neck duster that is fully sanitizable and in fact 50 state legal because it can be put in soap and water and it can be put in barbicide and it can be cleaned properly. Opposite side, I've turned, I've got a mirror over here, I'm referencing that sideburn in that mirror. I'm looking at this sideburn at the same time so that the two sideburns will wind up in the same place. I block my line, I turn the tool over and I clean up. This is where I use my white barber jacket as my backdrop. When I'm looking at him, I lower the chair a little bit. This becomes my big white poster board against which I can see contour, silhouette, and outline in perspective. You didn't think there was that much geometry, math, and science in there, did you? No idea. No <laughs> idea. All right. Look at that. Fold the ear down out of the way. We're going to use the last tooth on the edge of the trimmer to come up and around the ear, getting a beautiful clean line around the ear to perfect that ear arc. He's got another one on the other side. Looking at the other side in the mirror now, I get to reference two sides in the mirror across from each other. Now, the rear quarter panel. The rear quarter panel is defined as the area from the back of the ear arc to the lower corner. Now, Doug's got a beautiful, natural, tapered neckline, and I do not want to block him off. Among other things, because of the fact that he's got some growth direction, sideways, center, together in the middle, back to the center, upward and out, and perfect example of a neckline here in that ah, I had to take a drink there. It's a lot of nonstop talking. Perfect example that while his neckline isn't ideal, it is symmetrical. It's doing the same things on both sides. So it's going to be easy to get a very aesthetically pleasing finished look. So what we're going to do is I'm first going to come in and take off a little bit of the extra hair below the natural neckline so I can get a better look at what the finish will look like. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to block my rear quarter panel. Notice I come in, I tap, 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 tap. I apply pressure on the skin to tighten things up and I clean up any extraneous hair outside the natural neckline. I'm going to use my trimming detail and your finishing comb to come in against the natural growth direction, pushing that hair up and off so it'll stand out off of the scalp. And as I suspected, when I come in on that, I got a really nice tapered finish here playing with the natural growth direction. I'm now going to leave it alone. I'm not going to do anything else with that. <clears throat> what was that? Uh, Lynn said she'd learn more from this cut that she has in barber school. And Kate wants to know what are some ways to work around a bad cowlick with this hairstyle? What are some ways to work around a bad cowlick? Great question, Kate. Well, I will give you my standard cowlick answer. Cowlicks, as we naturally refer to as growth patterns or directions, you only have three choices 
for every cowlick you ever encounter your entire career. People want to make things complicated. And you know what? When you signed up for cause or barber school, you signed up because you thought it was going to be fun. You signed up because you thought you were going to make money. You didn't sign up because it was supposed to be tricky. And it's not. Let's keep it simple. Here's the deal. Choice number one, leave it long enough to lay down. Typically in the top crown, you need to leave enough length in a growth pattern or direction that when combed with its natural distribution, it'll lay in nicely. Eat piece of cake, leave it long enough to lay down. Choice number two, and this is where we are in Doug's crown, cut it short enough that it will in fact stick up, yet it contours into the overall and general silhouette of the haircut. I might even tweak this down just a touch. And as long as you ask, what the heck, let's just come up in through here and just take off a little bit of that so that while it stands up and off, it fills out the shape appropriately. Choice number one, leave it long enough to lay down. Choice number two, cut it short enough to stick up, yet fulfill the shape. Choice number three is gone. Put it on the floor. It'll be back in five weeks. Now, choice number three does not apply in the top crown generally does not apply to the front hairline. It's our typical choice of choice through the nape area, through the perimeter of a haircut. So those are really our only three options for cowlicks. Long enough to lay down, short enough to stick up, or gone. Notice again here, I'm combing, I inverted my zoot comb, I'm combing against the natural growth direction to encourage that hair to pop up into the comb so that then I can zipper it off. The handle on this is your detailing, trimming, or finishing comb, and it is thinner than almost every other comb you own. Very deliberately, it's got some flex if you want to pressure it against the head. It's got that rockered shape, that oblate shape for rockering with some of our cutting, and it lets us create that beautiful perimeter. So throughout this video, we've shared a ton of information on the world of classic vintage traditional lens hair cutting, and we have now, we shared feather, Switch blades, because this is Jatai Academy in the world of Jatai products, and we share uh, some other tools from some other companies and things, some categories that Jatai does not necessarily play in, which brings us to Jatai's big category, and that is razors, lining, and edging. So in a typical shop situation, in a typical environment with a haircut like Doug's, I'm gonna open up the cape in the next strip. Now you'll see there's a little bit of hair, along the neck, below what was the cape and neckline. I come in with my trimmer, and obviously that can be made short work of very rapidly. Now it's time to go in and lather and shave. I'm gonna lather the sideburn area, the ear arc, and the neckline. I'm gonna apply hot lather in the shop, or obviously the Healthy Luxury Shave products from Jatai are fabulous choices to use in an environment. I stepped away for just a minute to grab the Healthy Luxury Shave Set. And if you're using these products with your clients, it's great to use them for delivering the service as well as to suggest and recommend them as take-home products. Um, I'm going to use Hot Lather tonight so that he can experience what that's all about. We're going to go grab a little bit of lather. Now, I was not in the shop today. My machine's off, so my machine is cold but I'm going to apply a small amount of lather at the James, sideburns. James wants to know about the thinning share for uh, collar. Okay, first of all, James, James wants to know about the thinning shear for collars. First of all, James, don't ever call it a thinning shear again anytime throughout the rest of your career. It is a blending shear, and it is used for blending, and it is used for reducing bulk. The word thin, in the context of men's haircutting is a four letter word. We don't do thinning. Thinning is something that is done by God and nobody wants any of it from you as a haircutting professional. We might want to reduce bulk or we might want to blend. Not picking on you, but I'm a stickler for some of that language because I know of no clients that want to hear the word thinning. It just doesn't sound good or sound right. So we've lathered up the sideburns and the edges. Oh, as far as the, your question in particular, I don't use blending scissors to work through colics through the top of the head because most of the time it creates short pieces inside of long pieces. And when you do that, you just create support and you create more fullness and volume where you were looking to collapse. 
So the only time I would use it would be in the very ends of the hair, and it doesn't apply itself to a colic application in that regard. So not a good choice specifically for colic use. Two more comments. Two quick comments. We've got one on uh, razor hip. Go. Kate says, thank you so much. The hair cut looks great. Thank you, and Kate. where can she get a zoot comb? Zoot comb's online. Clipperguy.com, of course. And, All right. And Ray said, please remind newbies not to run the clippers horizontally around the head when tapering. I see it all the time, and it drives me crazy seeing them try to blend out the gouges after. Thank you, sir. Was that Ray? Yeah. Thank you, Ray. It makes me crazy, too. Nathan Body Razor with the wire wrapped blade, perfect for our cosmetologists that don't have barber licenses. This is my Japanese style razor handle. I happen to have a feather pro guard blade in there. Even though I have the barber license and even though I have 30 years of experience, I love cutting with guarded blades. It just gives me the confidence and the safety. So the things to know here are tension. I'm gonna lift up on the skin to get some tension. But before I go in with the razor, I'm gonna use my thumb to clear away the shave cream. I put that shave cream on the towel that's on the back of the client right there. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so you can see this a little better. I'm gonna wipe away the shave cream onto the towel. I'm gonna come in around the ear area applying tension on the skin and taking off that shave cream, okay? Sometimes I use my fingers as you just saw there. One of the things I love about the Japanese razor is the Japanese style razor is perfect for using the spine or the back edge of the razor to wipe away the shave cream. The shave cream is there to soften the hair, to make the skin slippery, to give us great blade slide and glide, to protect the skin and to prep the skin for shaving. When you see people like a blizzard with a snow plow with a razor plowing through an ocean of foam, that's not real shaving. This is how we do it. Watch carefully. You're going to get to see this reverse backhand stroke right here. The thumb takes away the shave cream or frequently in the shop I'll do it with the back of the spine of the razor, wipe it there, I come in backwards, I apply tension and I clean it up and I let go, just like that. Here's the back of my razor to peel away that extra shave cream. Coming in, fold that ear down out of the way. See, with the pro guard, I can't cut his ear off. Did you see that video that went viral a couple weeks ago of the barber spoofing that kid with a rubber ear and a bunch of ketchup or something, making him think he cut his ear off? We're not doing that tonight. We're just gonna do it clean, we're gonna do it professional, we're gonna do it right. So at this point, Got a beautiful haircut in place. We've lined an edge with our ProGuard blade in our Japanese style handle. The razor's gonna get washed, soap in water, then it's gonna get dropped in the barbicide jar when we're done with it. I take my next strip, watch carefully. The garbage, not the floor. I take my paper towel, Remember we said we were going to grab it by the corners and pull it out so that any hair on the towel doesn't go down the back of his neck. It's inside here or it's down the back on the floor. I use that towel to wipe off any excess shave cream. And then I pick up my bottle containing my aftershave. Now you'll notice that's a bottle of witch hazel. And I mix my aftershave, seven parts witch hazel to one part aftershave. Little barbershop secret trick. It cuts the sting and it cuts the stink. If you work in a barbershop all day and put an aftershave on everybody, you go home and you smell like you've been putting aftershave on everybody, and that's not good. My wife doesn't even like to go out to dinner with me if I'm slathering in aftershave like that. But by cutting it seven parts witch hazel to one part aftershave, I put a little bit of it on the same towel. Don't waste towels. Use them effectively and wipe up any area that you shaved around the head so it feels good. That towel goes in the garbage. We're gonna take powder on our duster, shake off a little excess. Feels good, smells good, kills the itch. He's almost ready to go. Lastly, is gonna be a little bit of styling product. And in his case, in Doug's case, we talked about a uh, water-based wax. I'm gonna use Clipper Guy Light Hold Classic Wax. Um, I just shot a video today on pucks, how to use pucks properly. We talked about taking product out with a 
popsicle stick if it's a community jar or some type of professional spatula. I also talked about using the back side of your nail or your knuckle as a more accurate way of taking product out of the jar. Uh, if it's your own jar at home, you've got some choices as well. I'm gonna go in with the fingernail here, and when I take that product out, I'm gonna do two things, Doug. That's about how much you're gonna use. Okay. Education and training. If he knows how much to use, we'll use the right amount, and he'll be looking good. Put the lid back on, I'm gonna hand it to him, Doug. That's the Clipper Guy, John Amico classic wax that we're using on your hair today. Put it in his hand, possession. Physical, touching. He's building a relationship with it. If he sits here more than another minute, he's gonna want one before he goes home. That's how we build take home hair care product sales. I got a little bit of that wax in my hand. I got a little bit of wax on both hands. I apply a little bit of wax into Doug's hair. We have a couple of questions. It's got a little bit of texture, movement, and shine. We are knocking on the top end of this here. I think our friends at Facebook knock us off in an hour. So we're gonna take any final questions we have and then we're going to wrap things up because we ran almost to the full hour tonight, which is great. We had a ton of great content, and I don't think we could have picked a better model on which to share some of that. Questions, what do we have? Uh, what towel brand Kevin wants to know? Towel brand. Uh, my friends from uh, Graham, Barbie Towels, that's the one. Sanix, my next trip. Barbie Towels is my paper towel right there. And Ray wants to know if you do a hard part, do you prefer razor or trimmers? Uh, with a hard part, and this is more classic. We weren't doing hard parts back in the era we were trying to emulate here. I will etch in my hard part first with my trimmer, with the non-moving blade on the heavy side, tap, 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 and then the perfect tool for the hard part, absolutely and unquestionably, the perfect tool for the hard part is the Feather Nathan Body Razor. If there wasn't, I mean, and I've got these online, these are awesome. Jatai.net is the website. You can buy them online from those guys. Uh, but for etching in that parting, nothing better than a uh, Feather Nathan Body for doing that. So this is our vintage men's haircut demonstration. We ran almost a full 55 here tonight. J-A-T-A-I.net on the web is where you know to find Jatai Academy. Subscribe to the videos on an ongoing basis. Keep your eye on my Instagram, Ivan Zoo. Keep your eye on Jatai's Instagram, Jatai International, for information on upcoming live broadcasts and presentations. Keep your eye on Premiere in Philadelphia this weekend, Sunday, Monday. I've got, uh, I'm on a panel discussion on Sunday, plus a classroom, plus I've got a full classroom, six classes on Monday. It's gonna be a very busy weekend. And the following weekend, Las Vegas Barber Expo uh, at the South Point Hotel, south on the Strip in Las Vegas. Uh, Doug would like to go with me to be a model there for that one, but I'm gonna have to tough that one out without you, buddy. You were good, uh, you were a great model and a fabulous haircut, and I appreciate you coming out tonight. We have some product gifts from our good friends at Chitai uh, as a thank you for your hair and your time this evening. Anybody got any further questions, hit me here or hit me on here later. Uh, watch it on replay and I'll be checking it out later. We're knocking on the hour here, so we're gonna say thank you and we're gonna say goodnight from Jatai Academy. I'm Ivan Zoot, I'm Clipper Guy. Thanks for being here, Good night.